In this video, I'm gonna be showing you Anything LLM, which is a new open source full stack application that enables you to turn any documents, resources, or pieces of content into context that you can then feed into an LLM and reference during a conversation. So it is very much like a ChatGPT-like feel, but over your own documents, as well as in an environment that you can control and tweak if you like. So there is both an open source version as well as a hosted platform I'll be touching on both of them and touching on how you can get started with, with either of them. So if you want to get started with the open source repository, you can just head over to the repo, which I'll put in the description of the video. And then from there, I just wanted to quickly touch on the tech stack. So I love when I see a project that's built within JavaScript. And the thing with this tech stack is the front end, the server, everything is built in an environment that I am very familiar with. And I think a lot of people on this channel would be glad to see. So it's using Vite and React on the front end, and then on the back end, it's using Node.js Express servers. So really great and familiar for the JavaScript developers out there. Now, in terms of the LLMs, there's a ton of support that's already baked into the project. So you can obviously use something like OpenAI. It has the ability to integrate Claude as well. And then the other cool thing is it gives you the ability to choose from something like LM Studios or local AI. So say if you just want to pull this down and use local models and play around with it, you can totally do that. So it will give you a nice chatbot interface where you can embed documents and do all of that locally if you're looking to do something like that. So say if you want to use something like Mistral or Llama and just have everything running locally, this is a great option. So it also gives you the ability to break out the embeddings model as well as the vectors database. So just to quickly show you that. So this is the local version running on my machine right now. So once you get set up, it will look something like this. Now, once you go within the settings tab here, when you first set this up, what you'll have to do is you'll first have to set your LLM preference. So in this case, I just have it set up for OpenAI, but you can set up, like I mentioned, Claude or a local model if you have either local AI or LLM Studio set up. And then from there, you can choose your embedding preference. So off the bat, they give you this anything LLM embedder, which just runs locally, so you don't need to incur additional costs for embeddings. But you can also select something like OpenAI if you'd like, or a different model from something like local AI. So similar, uh, just like on their embeddings within their vector database, it gives you the option to choose a bunch of different things. So uh, LanceDB, this is the one that will run within the instance uh, locally, but you can also select your Pinecone instance if you have one, or if you want to use an external uh, vector database like uh, Chroma or Weaviate or what have you. So you'll just have to go in and plug in your endpoints and API keys to get that all set up. So there's a couple other nice things within here. So they also have some data connect connectors right off the bat. So they have the GitHub repo data connector where you can just go in, plug in a GitHub repo. So you can imagine, say if you're getting started with a uh, new GitHub project and you want to know what a particular thing is doing, you could in theory go in, pull down that repo and have a conversation with that GitHub repository. So very easy, very intuitive, and everything is really just built into this GUI. So especially if you're going the hosted tier is you don't really need uh, coding experience. So some of these things, obviously if you want to set up GitHub, it'd be good if you sort of have the general sense on what things are, where to find things like API key, is obviously you'll have to set up some pieces, but you don't necessarily need to be a full on developer to set this up. So the other cool thing with the project is it also gives you the ability to set it up within a workspace that you can share with other people. So say if you're an administrator of sorts and you want to set it up so you have your team all have access to this thing, you can set it up in a way where there's the different uh, permissions where say you as the administrator uh, manage particular things and then you can go ahead and say limit the number of messages uh, someone's querying within the chat box 
on each day. So there's a ton of flexibility within this. And it's really a great project, especially that it's open source, that people can contribute to this and just play around with it, tweak it. So say if you don't like the look of it, or if you like the functionality, but you want to sort of um, build it to whatever your, your company's design is or implement it within a product, it really gives you a nice place, uh, a jumping off point, right? So if you were to go ahead and sign up for the free tier, so they have a three day free tier and what it will do is you can just go in, you don't need a credit card, put in your information and once you've done all of that, it will spin up this instance for you. So you can choose your custom URL for the subdomain here, and then you can just go ahead and uh, set it up just similar to what I showed you. So it's going to look just like the local version. There's no difference between the two, and you'll be able to uh, uh, swap in things uh, just as you would uh, if you were to set this up in your own environment. So if I just hop back to the GitHub repository here, is there are also some uh, deploy options here that are built right into the GitHub page. So I can't speak to if all of these work or how well they work or if there's any bugs that you might run into, but presumably these things are great, right? So it gives you the option. So if you're used to using uh, Docker or AWS, you can just go ahead and deploy it that way. Uh, it will also show you on their documentation page the specifications that are recommended to run this on something like, say, in AWS's case, on like an EC2 instance and, and all the resources that you'll need. So in terms of the pricing, so if you want to continue on with their self-hosted tier, these are the uh, pricing tiers right now. So it starts at $25 a month. Uh, it gives you four gigs of storage. If you want to go up from there, it's $100 a month. Now, also obviously, if you want to just play around with this locally or deploy it on your own instance, you'll be able to control costs that way. So in addition to the GUI is they are, is also an API. So say if you actually want to just build out the whole front end portion and just leverage the back end of this, because it's broken out that way, you could just take that express server and then have your chatbot query these endpoints. So you, it's pretty full feature. There's quite a bit in here. I haven't actually tested out the API quite yet but it does look like there is a lot of control that you have through the API here. So now in terms of actually getting started with it, so you can make a new workspace. So if I just say, let's say test, what you'll be able to do is you can either switch it from query mode or chat mode, but within here, you can actually go ahead and drag different documents. So let's say I want to put in a few new documents. I'll just grab in a few PDFs that I have on my other screen here. And these are regulatory filings from Apple. So I think I have their annual report, I have an insider filing, and I might have something else. So you can submit documents. Uh, there's a handful of documents of types you can submit. You can also submit a link if you'd like to scrape the website. And then as soon as you upload them, it's not gonna go ahead and automatically embed them. You'll actually have to go ahead and select them uh, here, and then you can embed them from there. So let's say if I just want to go ahead and move these over to my workspace, you'll be able to go ahead and save and embed from there. So the other thing with this that's really nice, I'll just click save and embed. But if you were to have selected something like the OpenAI embedding endpoint, it would give you an approximate cost adjacent to that save and embed, embed button. So you'll get a sense on whether this, you know, if it costs like a few cents or how much it would cost if say you have like a really big host of documents that you're plugging in there. It will give you sort of a general sense on how much it's going to cost to just embed them. So once you have that all set up, you can just go ahead and ask a question. You can say, how were Apple's financials? I'm not sure, I'll just yeah, get rid of that. Okay, and let's say, describe in detail how well Apple performed financially. So the nice thing with this is it gives you a really easy way where you can go ahead and swap out different embeddings models, different LLMs, uh, and really get a sense on what works best for your use case. 
So it's one of those things where sometimes it is difficult to judge how well an LLM is performing. And honestly, some of the best uh, testing is just practically trying it out. So imagining uh, what your users would be putting in, what your uh, workplace would be putting in, all of those types of things. This gives you an environment where you can just with a couple clicks and fetching an API key, you can swap out like how does Anthropic work? How does OpenAI work? How does this embeddings uh, endpoint work? Or how does this vector database uh, handle things? So it gives you a lot of flexibility uh, in terms of experimenting. Now in terms of the uh, another feature that I thought was really great is it also gives citations. So when it returns responses to you, like you saw on the screen here, what it's doing is it's fetching text chunks from the documents that you had uploaded. So this will give you those text chunks and what it's referencing to actually generate the response uh, back. So here we saw that 25 billion number and then we see that 25 billion number within the answer here. So really nice implementation. Kudos to the Mintplex team as well as the open source contributors here. I encourage you to check out the project, give it a star, a fork it, uh, add to it. I believe they're open to contributions. So that's pretty much it for this one. So if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.